Hey there, my name is Jaden, here as always for Foam Armory, and I'd like to start this video by thanking everybody for being very patient with me this past week. There's been a lot going on in my life, and I really appreciate all the support, the kindness of the community. And so today, I'd like to share with you all full templates for the Republic Commando helmet, as well as Hunter from the Bad Batch. Check it out. That's right. Today, we're looking at not one, but two different trooper buckets. I detailed the process of remodeling and drafting these patterns using Pepicura on our weekly live streams. The full process of unfolding Hunter's Helmet is also available on the channel, so feel free to download these templates as both PDF and PDO files down below in the description and follow along. Let's begin with the Republic Commando. Right out of the printer, these patterns are easy to piece together, especially with the 3D reference handy. I'll actually only be keeping these four of the original pet pieces for this build. The rest will be a set of upgraded patterns I put together after my first draft of this helmet that include a lot of additional details. If you'd like the benefit of the added details, you can pick them up for yourself from my Etsy store, the link down below. It's an easy way to help support the channel, plus more detail. For now, we barrel forward, transferring our patterns to some 6mm foam. The vast majority of these patterns will be cut out in this thickness, with the exception of the side panels and the keystone at the back of the helmet. We'll set these pieces aside for later. Generally, I like to use a big sharpie to transfer the bulk of my patterns to the foam. I'm a firm believer that anything worth doing is worth doing quickly and with the largest tool possible. Now we can bring back the side panels and the keystone, these pieces will be cutting out of 8mm sheet for a little added oomph. Quick side note, I'm using two different brands of foam here that play very well together. HD Foam by SKS Props and Art Minds, the house brand of Michael's Craft Stores. Once all the larger pieces have been traced out, I set about cutting them out with several different blades. I have a larger, retractable box cutter for longer, straight cuts as well as deep bevels. I also have a set of X-Acto blades for tighter curves and smaller details. Find what works for you when carving out these pieces, and don't be afraid to refer back to the 3D reference as often as you need. Again, link down below in the description. And remember kids, always keep your blades sharpened because a sharp blade is a safe blade. With that, let's pop over to our Hunter build. Clone Force 99 is also a commando squad, but with their highly customized kits and gear, this thing was a treat to build. Like a lot of trooper buckets, Hunter's helmet has the same sort of rebreather, ring around the head, and dome construction, but with a few key differences. He's done away with the T-visor and adopted a more square profile. Similar to the Republic Commando bucket, we'll be cutting a number of these pieces out at some rather intense bevels to achieve that square profile. So be sure to have some reference images nearby. As you're cutting and tracing Hunter's bucket, I highly recommend labeling mirror matches, as well as keeping some of the more fiddly bits around the back of the bucket organized separately. There's a number of them, and they're easy to lose if you're not careful. As we cut out our Hunter helmet, Let's drop a few general pieces of foam cutting advice. Always try to cut dome pieces as flat as possible. The absence of bevels on those pieces creates smooth, even curves in the final product. When cutting out two pieces that join together at an angle, bevel both pieces for tighter angles, but only one for more subtle variations. Also, when cutting curved pieces, try to keep your blade as vertical to the cutting surface as possible. That will help prevent warping on the cut edge. With everything rough cut, it's time to get into the nitty gritty. Bouncing back to our Republic Commando, now we start to see where some of these added details come into play. Over the top of the helmet, there are some detail lines near the front brim that we'll need to transfer as well as outlines for where the keystone will eventually sit. We'll be transferring these lines to the outside of the foam and adding some lines to the inside of the foam to be carved out as undercuts in the final pieces. There's actually a great deal of lines and grooves to be etched onto the face of many of these pieces, so be sure to take your time to get a handle on everything. One of the most elaborate examples of this is the 8mm side panels with a whole host of details to transfer, as well as a few extra panels to cut and trace as well. One large rectangle and four smaller panels per side. All of these pieces were cut out of 2mm HD foam and gingerly set aside. 
The back plate also has a few added pieces as well, including three identical rectangles and one larger square. I went ahead and cut these pieces out of 6mm foam with a slight outward bevel to try to build out the sense of depth in those details. Once we've transferred all of our lines from our patterns to our pieces, we can go through and actually add the detail into the various parts. Outward undercuts are introduced by scoring the foam about halfway through to allow it to bend outward, and inward undercuts are achieved with a V-groove cutaway to allow an inward bend. I like to go through and fill these undercuts with hot glue to help define these edges before we take contact cement to the foam. A quick line of glue and a blast of compressed air is all it takes. Around this time, some pieces like the keystone at the back of the helmet and a small sliver on the side panel are carefully cut and recessed. For smaller details like this, I turn to super glue to quickly secure things together for larger assembly. Some pieces required a little bit more work to grind in some additional details with my rotary tool. I used a stone bit with a square edge to create a clean groove in the right ear panel. I also cut a small piece of half-inch foam dowel and super glued that into place before also taking the rotary tool to the whole panel to round everything over. Similarly, I rounded over the edges that meet along the cranial ridges of the helmet. By rounding both of these edges, we'll create an easy, soft-edged groove where they meet. And believe me, it's going to look cool. We're nearly ready to start cementing everything together, but first we need to rip a few quick beveled strips of 6mm foam. We'll be using these to create a raised edge on the side panels in a circle. It'll be clearer in a moment. After giving all our pieces the once-over with our heat gun, we can quickly go about securing all our small bits to larger bits with a few dollops of super glue before pulling out our pot of contact cement. I always recommend giving your glue pot a quick stir to break up any chunks or bits that may have formed after sitting. I use DAP Weldwood Contact Cement, their original formula, and I apply it using 1 inch foam chip brushes. Two layers is usually enough to form a strong, lasting bond. Remember to apply the cement to both pieces you want to stick together. This stuff is great for fiddly bits like applying the strips around the ears. It's easy to just tack it down as you go and then trim to fit. Then, using our references, it's a simple matter of assembling the helmet piece after piece. As an aside, I wound up trimming the overlap at the back of the helmet slightly to get it to fit together better. This helmet was a unique challenge with some very complex joins, like the back plate to the side panel. You wind up slipping it under the ear cup, but also joining it edge to edge along the slope of the back. Broadly, I wound up building up the main body of the helmet and the dome before assembling the two together. There's a lot of pieces here, so be sure to take your time, line up your ends, and avoid overstretching your parts as that can lead to warping in the final product. While you're enjoying the full process of gluing this helmet together, a quick word on safety. Contact cement gives off some pretty gnarly fumes, so it's important to work in a well-ventilated area, and when in doubt, always put on a respirator. With the helmet fully assembled, I took my rotary tool to all the exposed edges and joints to quickly knock them down and give the sculpt a more cohesive feel. I also brought out my soldering iron and a metal ruler to etch in those detail lines from earlier. You can score and heat your lines with a knife, but I think the iron gives them a little more line weight and a little more consistency that will make them easier to paint in later. However, as with contact cement, be sure to mine the fumes. As a finishing touch, I used my rotary tool to grind in the twin details on the chin, as seen on the upgraded patterns. Now that this guy is ready for finishing details, let's give the same treatment to our hunter pattern pieces. Again, it's that same process of detailing our parts, transferring lines and markings, detailing the individual pieces for the larger assembly. Some parts, like the ear cups, were built up with some added parts in 8 and 2mm foam. I also knocked down the upper edge of those panels along the edge specified in the patterns. It's a great, subtle detail to add. I also finished up the Grilla the Rebreather by cutting out the front face and building up the inner details with some half-inch foam dowel and a strip of 2mm foam. That whole sub-assembly was put together using a bit of super glue and prep for final contact cement. 
The rest of the helmet goes together in much the same way as the commando bucket. Undercuts are applied to the inside of parts as indicated by the pattern lines, filled with hot glue for stability, and then the parts are all heat treated with our heat gun before absolutely attacking the parts with contact cement. During assembly, I found that there were four basic chunks that made up this helmet. The lower band, including the rebreather, the dome, the main body, and the ear panels. I have to say, putting this guy together was incredibly rewarding, and if you all don't mind, I'd like to just take a moment to appreciate a couple of supremely satisfying joints. Ah, yes. Excellent. With the body of the sculpt completed, I removed the space for the visor of the helmet. With that out of the way, we can once more bust out our rotary tool to knock down some of those harsh seams and edges, and really bring the piece together as a whole. I wanted to be sure that I hid some of the more aggressive gaps and seams on both of these buckets, so I pulled out a can of Plasti Dip and gave them both a quick spritz to highlight any imperfections before pulling out some water and quick seal. I use their white silicone caulk to fill seams because it's cheap, flexible, and paintable. It goes on fast and dries in a matter of minutes instead of hours. I actually tried out applying quick seal with a plastic blade to get an extra smooth finish on the seams of both of these domes. I was generally quite happy with the results, although for smaller, harder to reach areas, I went back to the tried and true method of dipping your hand in a glass of water and applying the quick seal directly. Once the filler is good and dry, I reach for matte Mod Podge and a bit of water to thin it down. This stuff is great for giving a final seal to your foam pieces and filling in those outer pores. In a pinch, white glue will do the trick, but you saw how big that jug of Mod Podge was. I'll be reaching for that for a while. I actually decided to give both of the helmets two solid coats of the watered down mixture, being sure to fully let dry between coats before finally, at last, absolutely drenching these things in gray plasti dip before base coating Hunter's helmet in satin gray and the commando bucket in a satin white. Here's where things start to get fun. Our viewers actually chose Scorch from Delta Squad for the final paint job on this particular helmet, so we'll be masking off the faceplate to add a layer of that same gray to the bucket. While that's drying, we'll actually start in on the Hunter bucket. I actually took a quick measure over the top of the helmet to lay down a pattern for the paint job. I wound up using a chip brush and mixing up some acrylics for the next few steps. After putting down an initial dry brush of a fairly dark gray acrylic, I went ahead and applied the pattern right over the top of the dome and brushed on a slightly darker gray. For the red highlights, I found the oldest, gummiest red paint in my drawer and absolutely beat it into the helmet for that rough, dusty look. I like to think Hunter himself would have approved of this process. Similarly, I poured out some matte white and hand detailed the half skull onto the left hand side of the helmet, before finishing everything up with a quick dry brush in pure white to really pop the sharp edges of the helmet. After all that, our commando bucket is ready to handle. Please enjoy the absolute satisfaction of peeling this tape job. Now we can go through and really pop the details on this bucket. I watered down a little black acrylic to fill all those tidy grooves we burned into the face of the helmet. Feel free to wipe away any excess and don't worry about any grime left on the piece. It just adds to the authenticity. We'll also bring out that chip brush again to give the whole thing a bit of texture and wear. I was pretty liberal with this step and I think you'll agree, the results speak for themselves. I even added a bit of silver rub and buff to go even further with this element of wear and tear before spot washing the helmet with some watered down black acrylic. At long last, we're nearly done with these buckets. It's time to install some visors. I found this blue tinted visor on Amazon, and I'll link to it down below. I used my visor pattern to trim down some of the excess with my rotary tool, and then I drilled some holes into the margins to help install it with some hot glue and really lock it into place. 
Hunter's visor was even easier to install. It's just a bit of tinted replacement visor trimmed with scissors to fit before hot gluing right into place. After a little puff of compressed air, these twin buckets are finally complete. So there you have it. I cannot tell you guys how excited I am for how well these templates came out. A little late for May the 4th, but thank God this is the May. Again, you can find links for all of these templates as well as all of the Bad Batch down below in the description. Quick debrief before we're done. Very happy with the way Hunter's helmet turned out. Really love the dusty look it was able to take on. And I think we really nailed the art style of the Clone Wars. However, there are a couple of small errors that I did make. The ear cups are supposed to actually reach the outer edge of this actual tube here. I didn't quite make it there with the thickness of the foam I was using. That'd be pretty easy to correct either with a piece around the edge or just thicker foam. Be better. Do better than me. Along with that, I also made a small error when I was assembling mine, which is I recessed the areas inside the teeth here that I was supposed to raise. It still looks good. It just could be more accurate. Honestly though, I'm really happy with how this one came out. It's super comfy to wear, not to mention just a super fun design. Bad Batch, man. This thing looks great. In terms of the Commando, I have a lot less issues with it. I'm really quite happy with the overall paint job. There's a lot of really fun detail in here. Not to mention, I just really love the way this visor in particular looks. You know, there's a way of doing this where you actually light up the visor and you get that effect, but I think that this tinted visor really gives you that fun sort of soft glow effect and you know it follows you around the room. I was also really happy that I was able to keep the stabilizers from the visor in here that actually holds the helmet up. Keeps it at the right, right? elevation for me. This paint job was actually decided upon by you folks in the community on a poll listed on the YouTube channel. Check out our community tab for more of that kind of stuff in the future. And of course, if you like this video, please subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment down below what you'd like to see me make in the future. Not to mention, if you make either of these builds, send me pics, send me video. I can be found on Instagram at Jaden Foam Armory. I can be found on Facebook under the Foam Armory. And of course, you can find me in my Discord. Again, link down below. For now, I'd like to give a huge shout out to our patrons who help make these builds and these templates possible, including brand new members, Suit Up Props, Benjamin, Laura, Ruben, Matt G, K-Snake, Pan Dulce, Jennifer Zayer, and of course, Austin of AJ Plays Piano. Thank you all so much for your continued support of the channel. It really helps make things like this possible. For now, I'd like to thank you all for watching, for enjoying, and as always, take care.